y'all look i know that we're used to a lot of the things that we do here sitting down a lot and being inactive but it kind of doesn't matter my my point more so is like if it's not really good for us as humans then we got to figure something else out one thing i'm actually very actively trying to do right now is figure out a solution that i can use that's better than me just sitting in this chair for hours a day because my work does require me to do a lot of computer work. But um, I'm trying to figure something else out because part of the reason that you and I have to stretch so much is because of sitting in these chairs. It's shortening our hip flexors, making our abdominals weak, which actually also kind of puts a lot more stress on the hip flexors. And so it's not good for us, y'all. So like I'm saying that to say, pay attention to your hip flexors if you want to age well, if you want to keep your mobility up, if you want to stay um, athletic to any degree, if you want to prevent um, and avoid injuries and stuff like that. morning y'all what's going on so you know um every day i think i can honestly say every day i am amazed at the practicality of health fitness and how straightforward it is in a lot of cases to take care of yourself so um you know i am a recreational track and field coach and as the season draws here to a close i just kind of was reflecting and thinking about how myself and the other coaches noticed um, earlier on in the season that a lot of our athletes um, weren't really lifting their legs up. Their, 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 their strides are sh- kind of short and not picking their legs up. And, and, and that's causing them, of course, like I just said, to shorten their strides in their sprinting as well as to – just kind of like not have a lot of power in their sprinting either. And one thing I know from my personal training, um, education, all that kind of stuff is that your your legs, whenever you bring your leg up like that, when in the um, the knee lift part of a sprint or a walk for that matter, that is largely controlled by what you call your hip flexors. Now your hip flexors are muscles that um i think for the most part originate inside of like your thigh and then they go to and attach to somewhere around your knee and they literally will lift your leg and bring your um your leg toward your chest and even help to bring your chest towards your leg uh, you know and so if you're having issues with lifting your legs then that is due to your um, hip flexors being tight or um, weak or usually in our society, a combination of both. Now, I've talked about this recently to a a small degree, and I will talk about it a little bit now. A big issue, a big reason rather for these tight, you know, um, weak hip flexors is these chairs that we sit in because we sit in chairs all the time. And literally what happens is you put your legs in such a state that your hip flexes are um, held in this shortened position. Now, if we did deep squats like people in other countries do, like where they're sitting is like really like being in a deep squat. Because you're bring, that knee is coming toward your chest and you're lengthening that hip flexor muscle group. And so it actually is good for your hip flexors, helps you to maintain 
flexibility and all of that kind of stuff. However, we sit in chairs all the time for hours a day, hours a day, and we just don't really think anything of it because it's normal for us, but it's just not a good anatomical position for humans, and it causes us over time to, you know, suffer a variety of different consequences, which I'll talk about in a second, but it causes tight and weak hip flexion muscles. Again, you know, this is kind of impeding you from being able to lift your leg up, you know, um, strong and and, and in a strong and flexible manner. And the consequences of that are very significant. Have you ever noticed, you know, someone who's elderly who shuffles, you know, that could be due in part to tight, weak hip flexors sitting down for decades and decades and decades. Um, so that's one of the consequences of having tight, weak hip flexors, having a shortened gait, a shortened stride when you walk. Also, um, back pain. If you deal with back pain, think about this. You probably, it could be due to you sitting down too much and also not being flexible and strong enough in your hip flexors. Because what happens is with those hip flexors being attached to like your, like inside of your hip or even to your, uh, I think your lumbar spine, lumbar, you know, is like your lower spine back here where it curves. Those tight muscles, like if this is your spine and this is your hip flexor, because the hip flexor is shortened, then it's kind of pulling your spine in. It's calling, it's causing what's called hyperlordosis. Like it exaggerates the curvature in your lower spine, in your lumbar spine. And that also can cause your pelvis. If this is your pelvis like this, it causes your pelvis with the spine attached to tilt forward. That's called um, uh, what is that called? Well, it's just it's a, a, a anterior tilt of the pelvis, and so a lot of times you even notice that in your you know you notice that in your posture, but it's because those hip flexors are tight, and that causes back pain because your back vertebrae are in an unnatural position. Again, a lot of this is due to sitting for hours and hours a day that over time it changes your physiology to one that's actually not good for your body. It doesn't matter how normal it is in our society. It's just not a good anatomical position for us to hold for hours and hours to sit down all the time. But it's also due to lack of movement, being sedentary. Okay. Another thing is you're more susceptible to straining those hip flexors now. And I actually did that. Unfortunately, during the track season, I was I was racing some of the kids and I was doing fine, but I um I pulled a hip flexor. And you know what? Even though I stretch and I was stretching here and there during that time, I wasn't really stretching my hip flexors. And sitting hours a day, I'm sure contributed to that. You know, because I've been doing that, you know, especially since um really all my life. Grade school, you know, all through college all through my engineering career, 14 years of sitting. And then even here, I sit a lot when I'm here doing a lot of stuff I do on the computer, even though I actually do exercise quite a bit. Um, and then finally, another thing is it's harder to stand up straight um, when those hip flexors are, are tight because you because you figure, again, it's if, you know, if these are your legs and this is your torso, the hip flexors help to bring these together, hip, bring your torso and your legs together. So... If those hip flexors are tight, it's kind of hard to like really straighten your body all the way. And, you know, so that also can be a contributor to the hunched over posture that um, you tend to see in people who are elder, elderly and who are kind of having issues with moving around. I say all that to say, y'all, y'all, look, I know that we're used to a lot of the things that we do here, sitting down a lot um, and being inactive, but it kind of doesn't matter. My My point more so is like, if it's not really good for us as humans, then we got to figure something else out. One thing I'm actually very actively trying to do right now is figure out a solution that I can use at least some of the time to, um, you know, that's better than me just sitting in this chair for hours a day because my work does require me to do a lot of computer work. But um, I'm trying to figure something else out because 
part of the reason that you and I have to stretch so much is because of sitting in these chairs. It's shortening our hip flexors, making our abdominals weak, which actually also kind of puts a lot more stress on the hip flexors. And so it's not good for us, y'all. So like I'm saying that to say, pay attention to your hip flexors if you want to age well, if you want to keep your mobility up, if you want to stay um, athletic to any degree, if you want to prevent um, and avoid injuries and stuff like that. Okay? Hopefully, hopefully this helps somebody. Y'all have a good day. If you like this content, you might also be interested in one of my books. Learn how you can take steps literally today to successfully manage, control, and overcome common issues such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and belly fat. It's all about putting power back in your hands to improve your own health. Get your book copy today by the links in the description or by visiting seanmcclennan.com forward slash books. Also, don't forget, hit the like button and subscribe and join my email list at seanmcclendon.com forward slash subscribe.